All right. Episode two of Conversations with Robert, Robert and Joel. Joel. <laughs> Not Joel Robert. So we got some feedback last time. Um, we heard that the background was dirty. The sound wasn't perfect, but it was pretty good. And the sun was shining in yeah, our face. No, nobody so. had anything to say about the content, okay. but that's okay. But moving forward, as you can tell, we uh, our two-week hiatus, we got some decent sound equipment. A little impromptu uh, backdrop, and I think we have officially became Blue Belt Podcasters, so we're a little bit better than what we were. I'm so white belt. <laughs> but we're getting better, and we're going to move forward from here. So today is episode two. I know y'all been waiting to hear it, um, and we decided we wanted to talk about forgiveness. Right. So, Robert, I'm going to let you start. What are your thoughts about, about forgiveness? the overall issue about forgiveness? It's... It's something we all deal with or need to deal with and understand, um, but it's hard sometimes. Um, life gets hard. Situations get tough, but um, it clearly states in Scripture that we should forgive often and always. Yeah. You know, this is kind of a timely thing. If uh, anybody was watching the news last night, police officer in Texas who mm -hmm. shot the neighbor and the brother of the person who died Correct. forgave the, the officer mm -hmm. and one of the things we got to you know when we talk about the issue of forgiveness the problem many people have are the and I won't call them well they're extreme situations the, the the horrific acts of violence or abuse that have been put upon a person and they always ask well am I supposed to forgive them for those kinds of things and we may or may not touch on that subject real deeply. What we need to understand is there's a lot of different levels of situations in which people have been harmed. And we're not here to say that in every situation this is the pattern you're supposed to take. But there are some basic biblical principles about forgiveness, and that's really just what I think we need to bring out. Mm -hmm. um, and. and just to kind of preface our whole thing, the first thing we need to understand about forgiveness is forgiving somebody for whatever they've done to you does not mean you approve of what they've done. It doesn't right. mean that uh, what they did was appropriate. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will allow them to continue to be in your life as a result of what they've done. Because there are some boundaries that you have to set mm -hmm. up in your life. And if somebody violates those boundaries, you're not Forgiveness does not mean you've got to let them remain in that situation. Forgiveness isn't necessarily acceptance. It's, I get that, you know, and talking about those options and forgiveness, sometimes we're telling ourselves, you know, we have to accept what happened to us to forgive them. That's not what you're saying. No, no accepting that outcome isn't forgiveness. It's, you know, Biblically, forgiveness is a magnitude of things. I see Joel's got some scripture he's um, researched and printed out. And I looked up some forgiveness, just kind of Googled it, um, some additional scriptures I could find, and there's 50-plus at least of forgiveness. Well, most of the scriptures in the Bible that deal with forgiveness is us understanding how much God has forgiven us. Right. And when it does apply it to our life and how we're to react, it's always pointed out that we're to forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. And does that mean if you don't forgive, you're not a good Christian? No, not necessarily. But I think what, what the writers of the, the Bible, what God wants us to know through all this is that uh, forgiveness is a part of the relationship we have with him. And if we want to continue to have a good relationship with him, we've got to learn from his example with us how to deal with those who have hurt us and again there's all kinds of different levels of hurt over the years I've had people lie to me I've had people cheat me I've had people steal from me um, have I forgiven them yes do I allow them still to be in my life a few of them uh, will I let them do those things to me again no I'm suspicious of them of and, I, and, and I'm, I'm careful I won't say I'm suspicious. I'm careful not to let to it happen. Some kind of safeguard. Not to let it happen again. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know. But what I need to understand is that 
I have done so many things as a as an individual when it comes to my relationship with God that I have failed Him. I have made mistakes, and He continues to forgive me. Uh, and so, one of the things we're reminded of in Scripture is that we've always got to keep in mind when we relate to other people how God relates to us. Uh, that's first and foremost. Right. And if we want God to, if we expect God to forgive us, we need to be able to forgive others. Um, that's the main point. The other thing is we need to understand you can't move forward if you're hanging on to all those feelings of animosity, anger, mm-hmm. hurt. Uh, it's hard to move on with your life. Dwelling in the past. Um, and, you know, I kind of told you this a little bit last week. I got this friend that um, he told me he was going to do something. It's more health related, and he said he was going to move forward in this path, following his health goals. And he had a mishap to where he fell back on what he told me he was going to do, and he came to me and apologized, and to the point to where he was choked up, apologized and. I said, you don't have to apologize to me, you know. You're not doing this for me. You're doing this for yourself because this is for betterment of you. And But he couldn't get past that moment of he was so disappointed that he wasn't, he wasn't moving forward from the past. And I do that often. Um, when I mess up or if I do someone wrong, if I whatever I fall short on, you know, it just feels like you're stuck in concrete for days on end, if not longer, of uh, getting past. It's hard to get past that guilt and move forward. Right. And you bring up an interesting point about apologizing. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think it requires an apology for us to issue a f- uh, forgiveness to someone? No. And b- Biblically or emotionally how we feel. <laughs> That's the Biblically, I would say... Uh, we, d- we don't have to, they don't have to apologize. Once the incident happens, um, we should be mature enough, hopefully, if we can, to go ahead and forgive that person. But the human side of us, the emotional side of us, it seems like, you know, we got to check beside that person's name until they apologize, then we can move forward. Right. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle with this. Is mm-hmm. They, they're expecting an apology. And the other side of that coin is that sometimes, and I've heard this happen before, a person will go to them, they've been harmed by that person, and they'll say to them, you know, well, I forgive you for what you've done. And they sit there and they wait. And they're waiting for the other person to ask for forgiveness or mm-hmm. tell them they're sorry or whatever the case may be. You know, And I have found in some cases that when you go to somebody and say, you know, I forgive you for the harm you caused me, they'll look at you like, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. What do you mean, the, the harm? That's a loaded forgiveness. The, the, yeah. Well, then the, it just starts a fight. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you came to them wanting to forgive. Maybe you were genuine in that attitude. They brushed it off. They didn't, they didn't even realize they'd hurt your feelings or did something to harm you. And they look at you like, well, I I'm, I'm, don't really care if you forgive me or, you know. Well, you fine. should care that I forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so it just kind of starts it all over again. And, and that's one of the things that we need to understand, like you said with your friend. He came to you to apologize, uh, but there was no reason for the apology. The Correct. forgiveness was already there. Uh, but the other side of that is, does an apo- is an apology required for restoration in the relationship that's been harmed? I think the apology definitely helps with restoration. Yeah. Now... Ooh, that's a tough one. He put me on the spot. Is it required? Uh, no. Not, I'm speaking as a Christian at this point. Um, I don't know if it's – I should be mature enough in my walk to go ahead and forgive the person. Well, no, but, we, we well, forgive him, but I'm saying will we restore the relationship, relationship without the apology? That's, I'd say no. And, and I, I'm, my personal, it would be hard for me to restore that relationship without the person at least acknowledging that they wronged me in some right. fashion. And, and that's where everybody gets confused with this. The, the whole thing about a, a forgiveness, forgiveness does not necessarily lead to a restored relationship. Uh, from a biblical standpoint, talking about God, God forgave us. He forgave us long before we've done anything to harm him. And he forgives us in spite of the fact whether or not we have apologized to him or what we would say uh, asked for forgiveness or confessed our sins 
or repented of our sins. We're forgiven. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is for everyone. But the restored relationship only happens when the person who has caused the harm makes the move towards accepting responsibility, admitting fault, and seeking to restore the relationship. Right, seeking the restoration. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. what happens with a lot of people is, you know, we keep trying to go and restore the relationship. Sometimes we have to be like God, in which he said, the, it, it's out there for you to take hold of, but this is as far as I go. And you have to come the rest of the way. Is mm -hmm. that uh, harsh? No, but it, it, otherwise a person who constantly is trying to forgive people or restore relationships they're always running after that person and they keep getting hurt by that person mm -hmm. that's one of the things we need to understand J peter asked god how many times do you forgive somebody and jesus answer was 70 times seven and we've taken that to mean that they can hurt us over and over and over and over again we keep forgiving them and i don't really think that's the intention of the scripture what the intention of the scripture is is that there is no bounds to our willingness to forgive there's no time limit or n numerical limit but, it, but he's not telling us to let that person hurt us over and over and over again. We don't have to accept the hurt. Right. We can mm -hmm. move forward. Right. You know, and I guess we've all probably had that person in our life or friends or family or something that, you know, that have affected us. And, but sometimes forgiving that person and going after that restoration feels like acceptance mm -hmm. you know and it's that's hard to tell someone you know that you should forgive somebody you know and it, it's especially hard to tell someone hey the bible says you should forgive that person seven times 70 yeah. you know continue and we misapply that stuff sometimes because as much as i screw up continuously over and over and over jesus has forgiven me his blood has covered my sins, and I continue to be a human and sinner. And, of course, I'm trying to move forward towards Christ in Christ's likeness, but I'm not always perfect. <laughs> but see, the thing about the whole issue about forgiveness, yeah. it has nothing to do with the other person who's wronged. Mm -hmm. It's for the person who's been wronged because I can't move forward in my own life I, I can't let go of the hurt and be able to function again. Um, it, it's sort of you know, the issues of divorce come up in this whole aspect of forgiveness. Uh, one spouse has violated the, the marriage covenant mm -hmm. in some way or the other that, and, and calls for divorce. And unless the, the, the one who was hurt or the, the spouse that was harmed in the divorce the next relationship, the next marriage is going to suffer because of the inability to forgive the last person. Um, and and that, that's true in, in employment situations. Mm -hmm. It's true in ministry situations. It's true in neighborhood situations. You know, one neighbor does something, they, they, they cause you a problem. I had a neighbor one time that just constantly gave me all kinds of headaches. And, you know, you don't write off every neighbor in the in the neighborhood because one guy one bad apple. you know or the next person who moves into that house or the next job you take or the next person that you have to work with uh, you've got to be able to let go of those things that people have done in the past if you want to function in the present mm -hmm. and, and that's why forgiveness is important uh, again we're not saying that what somebody has done is is, is okay that, that it wasn't right or is all right for them to do those things. That's got nothing to do with forgiveness. The forgiveness is I want to be able to function in the future. And if I'm holding on to the animosity of the past, I can't do that. Now, the other thing is, is with forgiveness, forgiveness is not really complete until we learn to forget. And that's, well, as you were saying that just, just then, and, you know, it got me thinking that, you know, if you wronged me and I needed to forgive you, I feel like I can work through that and we can work through that with another person. But what catches a lot of it is if, if I wrong you, you forgive me, but me forgiving myself. The conviction that 
a lot of times we feel when we mess up mm -hmm. and moving on from there. You know, people wrong us all the time, you know, in life. It's going to happen. We forget the person. We forget about it. A week later, we forget that encounter ever happened. But when we wrongdo somebody, whatever it may be, and they've forgiven us, it seems like that's, that's, just, that's just guilt. That's the guilt. Mm -hmm. And that, it's hard to forgive and forget our things. Yeah, but, I, you know, that's a different situation uh, because – we we can't forgive ourselves what we can do is learn from our mistakes we can try to make make things right when it's ever possible sometimes it's not always possible to make mm -hmm. things right uh, but i, I think uh, the idea that i need to forgive myself um, part of that just comes with with acknowledging uh, that what you've done um, has caused harm and that really takes us to a different a different aspect of that and we kind of turn the table a little bit, but mm -hmm. we'll go there with it. Um, when we harm somebody, we're not only harming that person, we're also violating our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we talk about sin, and, and every sin is a violation of God's law right. and, and is a harmful to God. But many of the sins that we commit involve another person. Mm -hmm. And so not only have we, we hurt that person, but we've also hurt God. And we, we try to make it right with that person, but we somehow think that uh, as much as we realize that God forgives us, that we're not really sure he's forgiven us. And, and we really struggle with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that also goes back to what, what Peter was asking. Maybe Jesus was just simply telling Peter that the, the forgiveness that is available from God is, is without um, limits. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yeah, we, we get up every day saying, I'm not going to do that again, and we do it again, and we ask God to forgive us again. And sometimes we say, as, as my wife would say, if you really are sorry for what you've done, there'll be a change in behavior. Right. And uh, not that I want to invoke my wife's name in this conversation, <laughs> but, you know, that, that's, that's true. That's true. If you're really sorry, you're going to mm -hmm. change behavior. Um, and, 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 again, you know, is saying I'm sorry, is that really an apology? I'm, I'm kind of big on just words don't mean anything. Yeah. yeah. And action speaks everything. I mean, the, some of the best leaders in society spoke few words, and, you know, and actions lead. And so it goes the same way. If uh, To say I forgive somebody is, is a meaningless word mm -hmm. unless it follows through with action. And so the question is, what does forgiveness look like? Ooh, put me on the spot. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Yeah. Uh, and, well, the the ultimate appearance of forgiveness is Jesus being crucified as someone's piercing his side mm -hmm. and him saying, you know, it's finished, the debt's paid. It's hard to live up to that standard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, just being on the spot, when I think of forgiveness and what forgiveness should look like, I mean that's the that's the ultimate example. Yeah. Now I'm going to contradict myself just a little bit here because I did say earlier that when somebody harms you, uh, that doesn't mean you can allow them to keep harming you. Um, but it does mean that if they've harmed you and you've truly forgiven that person for what they've done, is you will give them the benefit of the doubt up to them harming you again. You mm -hmm. don't let them harm you again. You may need to put some guards in your life. And, and again, I'm, I want to be very careful to not leave the impression that you, le you stay in a relationship that is harmful to you. Right. Uh, that's not the intention. That's not what God wants of us. Um, but let's be honest. That those, those, are, those are serious situations, but those are not the everyday things that get us worked up. No. You know, uh, we get worked up about all the little inconveniences and, and all the little ways in which people have failed us. And, and sometimes it, it just builds and it builds. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I used to joke around. Again, I'm going to invoke my wife. I'm going to joke around. I used to joke around. Whenever my wife would just out of the blue tell me that she loves me, I always ask her, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. 
because there was a time when she said she just had to constantly remind herself that, that she, she loved, loved me you. <laughs> uh, because I was constantly doing constantly. stuff that really irritated her. Uh, I think we've all been there a little. So, you know, what does forgiveness look like? Forgiveness is is being available to somebody. Forgiveness is being sacrificial. Forgiveness is treating the next person in a line without without reservations, without limitations. Mm-hmm. Because the last person on the line hurt you, uh, and that's where Jesus did. Je- Jesus died for all of us. Not everybody received the forgive, received the benefit of the forgiveness because they haven't accepted Christ. But He died for all of us, even knowing what we would do to Him. Now we're not capable of being Christ in that way, um, but the inten- the intention or the the implication is that to truly forgive and have a forgiving spirit means that you may open yourself up to some some hurts again Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's just part of life and you can't you can't avoid that Uh, but at the same time if you've forgiven someone then you're not always going to be bringing it back up yeah Uh, you know this guy was talking to his counselor one day and he said "My, my, my wife is historical he said, don't you mean hysterical? He said, no, she's historical. She keeps bringing up the past. Constantly reminds me of my faults over and over again. Yeah, over. and yeah. We, we, can, we all can get historical. Yeah. Uh, and it's not a gender issue. It's not an age issue. We, we always go back and we, we remember what somebody right. has done. And when they hurt us the next time or fail us the next time, and let's quit saying you're using the word hurt. Let's just talk about failure. Mm-hmm. They have failed us in the past, and we've forgiven that failure. And they fail us again. Okay, if we have truly forgiven them on the past failure, we won't bring it up in the present failure. Joel, you remember those two times ago that yeah. you've done the same thing over yeah. and over? And we hear that over and over right. and over. Yeah. Like, you know, you keep doing this, or you, yeah. you, know, or you said you wouldn't do it anymore. Uh, you know, it's, it, but if I truly forgave you. Yeah, and, you know, I, it's, it, I always use this illustration. If uh, somebody came along and bought, brought $20 and they mm-hmm. said, I'll pay you back next week. Next week comes, they don't pay you back. Uh, and they come along another week later, and they say, can I borrow 20 more dollars from you? And you say, well, you didn't pay me back the last 20. And they go, well, you know, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Yeah, I forgive you. Will you, will you lend me $20? You know, that, that is the moment you decide, uh, did I lend you the $20 or did I give you the $20? Yeah. Uh, in, in a spiritual standpoint, you know, we're giving forgiveness. We're not lending it. We're not expecting something in return for forgiveness. We're not expecting them to change their behavior. We're not expecting them to make amends. We're not expecting them to give us an apology. Mm-hmm. We, have, we have given it. We have let go of it. We don't expect anything in return. So I'm free to move on with my life. Yeah. If that person can't move on, you talked about you know we can't forgive ourselves. If that person can't move on, well, they got to come to terms with that. Mm-hmm. I want to move on with my life, and I don't want to make a decision today based on somebody failing me in the past. I want to be able to look at each situation as it comes and deal with it independent of that. And when you said that, you know, these failures or the hurt, you know, if we truly forgave them, we should give them the opportunity up until that point to the failure or hurt comes back. And at that point, we need to think, you know, do I allow it to go one step further and forgive them again? And, you know, we talked about it some on the last episode. Um, and that's where I think it's important to the people that we forgive or we get re- forgiveness from. It's important to have that relationship so they are that crutch at times when I'm failing at whatever. They can grab my hand and say, come on. We're going to move forward from this. Let me give you yeah. one other situation. What if you're unable to have a relationship with that person ever again? Maybe the person who's caused the harm um, has moved away. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe they're dead. And you're still dealing with the hurt. And, and this is the other thing. You know, The forgiveness doesn't mean I got hurt five minutes ago and I forgave you. Mm-hmm. It may take me a while to get to the point when I go through the whole process of grief that I come to terms with forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Um, so that, that's the other thing. I, I don't want to minimize what people are going through or, or the hurt that they've had or any of those kinds of things because it's, it's important for us to understand that, uh, especially in those grievous situations, that, that true physical harm, uh, murder, or whatever the case may have been, is taking place, then, um, you know, th there's a grieving process. But at some point in time, you come to that point and say, okay, I'm now able and ready to forgive that person. But they're not in your life. That circumstance right there, to the T is what led me to Christ, that exact circumstance. You know, it's when people become saved, that seems like that's the first thing on your to-do list as a Christian is you want to forgive, um, you want to forget, and you want to build that bridge with the relationships you messed up. Um, but that circumstance to where you can't forgive the person or you can't forgive yourself because they moved away or passed away, that's what hurts. And that that situation is what led me to Christ. And, you know, I'll share it on camera, I guess. Um, you know, my mom had a bad accident when I was three years old. She had over 26 surgeries throughout the rest of my life. So because of that, she got addicted to painkillers and narcotics and advancement in medicine. And next thing you know, the first week of every month, um, she was doped up because she would take all her medicine and then be out for the rest of the, out of the medicine for the rest of the month. So Nikki and I got married June 7th, 08, the beginning of the month. And the night prior to wedding day, my mother was intoxicated. I said, I told my mom, I said, mom, if you're not sober, I just assume you not come to the wedding. And that was the last time I ever spoke to my mother. And you know, that, I'm getting choked up a little bit on camera, but that there at that moment is what I knew I was missing something in my life. And it wasn't because of anyone else, it was because of the guilt I had. The last thing I ever told my mother was, Mama, I need you to sober up, or I just assume you not come to my wedding. And she didn't make it. And I I lived with that guilt, and that's the reason I do the job I do. That's the reason I think about substance abuse and the way I do. But that moment there is that's hard to get past. And the only the only thing that I found to help me get through that moment is Jesus Christ and the blood he shed for us. Mm -hmm. So, sorry to get on soapbox there. That's okay. That's the first know. time I've heard that, that part of your testimony. You know, let me just, as, as the last word, I was going to give you the last word, but I'm going to take the last word here. No problem. Uh, because we're out of time. Yeah. Uh, but the last word is, is uh, forgiveness is the path to moving forward. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, what I, that's what I want to be able to relate more than anything else is it's not moving on, it's moving forward. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we've got to be able to forgive if we want to move forward. Mm -hmm. And that's what I believe is the, I agree. the biblical principles that God's teaching us. Well, Joel, we promised ourselves that uh, we keep this thing below 45 minutes because... Uh, we said 30 minutes, and I think we are, <laughs> we are there. I see you check your timer. We hit 30 minutes. And um, so we want to keep it short and sweet, but to the point uh, and, to, and effective. Um, but... We have leveled up our production here, and hopefully it looks yeah. better and sounds we'll better. We'll see whether or not what side of my face is a better, <laughs> see a better look. Which side's the good side, but um, I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, the conversations. I hope you all enjoy these conversations. Um, and we're open to any topics you have. And thank you, uh, audience, for forgiving us on the uh, poor production of last time. But we're trying to get better. We're trying to get better. Um, what do you want to talk about next? And let's leave it up to our viewers. Uh, oh, that's scary. That's scary, but we're going to step out on faith here, and hopefully um, y'all give us some topics that we can feed off of. But if not, we'll come up with something, and we'll we'll uh, give it another shot. So we're looking at uh, every other week or so. Yeah, we're trying to do one of these. Um, this is episode two of many to come. Um, like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is where it will come through. I'll share it on my social media and try to get it attached to some of the uh, church's social media stuff. Um, yeah, any work, plugs? We're, we're working on that. Well, just uh, 
we're working on uh, some things here at church we're making our social media a little more active and our website which conversations is with robert and joel brought to you by first baptist sunnyside first baptist sunnyside dot com first baptist sunnyside dot com thank you mm-hmm. All right. <laughs>